However, if you don't engage the patient in shared decision making, that care plan that you have that is evidence-based has no value unless the patient buys into it and also takes action on that. And I contend to me that is one of the underutilized levers that we all collectively need to do more. Because you know what? Shared sure decision making has no side effects, as far as I know. And is one of the more powerful ways to drive engagement of that. So part of what we do in that group visit setting is to use some standard tools to help with the dialogue. These in of itself is not the intervention. It is a dialogue in that room with a cohort of other of their peers guided by the clinician to accept the care plan that the patient uh, values the patient's uh, uh, values and where they are, their motivation, their capabilities is the key. This is a visual of one of the decision-making aids that we give to the patient for this program that kind of outlines the various choices for them. And what this does is that you patient, after discussion, select which item that you want to commit to. This is part of your action plan that you create. We capture it in our chart, but you walk away with a plan over there. And then what we heard from our patients is that uh, they don't want just to be us throwing medicines at them. Uh, it is about really meeting them where they are and knowing what they want. A lot of them is really, uh, it's their lifestyle. It is a, some of the patients bring in their spouse, <laughs> which is very, very interesting to hear what they eat or not eat, <laughs> what, they, uh, uh, what type of activity they do or not, how much alcohol they drink. <laughs> Uh, it's that open dialogue, that conversation, and that shared learning is where that magic occurs. And to me, for this, it's even more powerful than a one-on-one -on -one visit. Because then the hierarchy is a little bit different in the group setting. And for a program like this, uh, it has been very, very successful. Um, and as a result of that, besides the medication part of it, a lot of the opportunity is linking the patient to resources where they sh can live healthier lives. A lot of patients come in, they have joint disease and say, I can't exercise, doc, uh, so uh, don't forget about that. But then again, we ask, well, for those of you who have similar challenges, do you have anything to suggest to patient Jones to overcome their barriers? And inevitably, there are. Um, some patients uh, say that, oh, I'm just overwhelmed uh, with um, uh, illness with, uh, with my spouse. I don't, uh, I, this is too hard for me to do. That has happened to other members in the room. They give them uh, suggestions on how they can cope with stress. That comes up quite often. And then we have times where there actually there's connections made in that room or just peer-to-peer -peer support as well. Which again, you can't have it if it's in a one-on-one -on -one visit. So strategically, if you have the right patient population and the right outcomes you want to drive to, it's a very powerful intervention we do. And I think Chavi has mentioned in her slides, there are also shared medical appointments for diabetes as well. But I wanted to bring this story over here to really tell, uh, to, to tell the shared decision-making story apart about that. It is a different dialogue and then part of us is also training the clinicians to do that, to refrain from always giving the answers, right? For those of you who know me, uh, we're supposed to be asking more questions, and that's also part of motivational interviewing as well. So how do we change that dialogue to impact that? And then once we know where the patient where it is, connecting them with the information and resources we have. So in this program, we do a deliberate effort of connecting them to our internal uh, health education programs and we also leverage the uh, edu health educators to do in-between touches to check on our patients. They get a wonderful diagram. Um, and at the end, it is really about inspiring the patient to take action to lower their cardiovascular risk. And in order to inspire them, we on the clinical side need to know and have the techniques and the tools to do so. A lot of it, as we mentioned, is the dialogue we have with them. Switching the dialogue from directive to more motivational and inviting them in and have us 
on the clinical side, give them the space that if they're not quite ready to take uh, statin as their 11th medication, honor that with them, have to make sure they understand the purpose behind that, and engage them on the way to get them there. Because it's not one and done. Sometimes it's through multiple points. Every patient has their motivation and capabilities. And we have to meet them where they are before they will take action on it. Otherwise, it's waste. You can prescribe it, they never pick it up. What good have you done? So this is our ending slide over here to talk about, here that's where we are. We hear about delivering better care to our patients, healthier populations, and then we feel we have a commitment to also do it in lowering total cost of care. So I want to thank you for your time. Uh, my contact information is there. So I'll turn it back for the Q&A. Thanks so much.